There are three things that are certain in this lifetime. Death, taxes, and YouTubers ultimately uploading their final video. Sometimes number three is because of number one. Sometimes number three is because of number two. But most of the time, there's genuine reasons as to why a YouTuber stops uploading. Some of your favorite creators one day will stop uploading, but today we'll be looking at creators that have already decided to call it quits in this game we call YouTube. Starting off with one of the most influential YouTube channels of all time. I think it was the first channel to reach 1 million subscribers. Don't quote me on that. But we have Fred. So so Fred, if you've never seen his videos before, he has this really high-pitched voice. He was this kid that did skits and like pranks and fun things like that. He had a TV show. He had like three movies. He was the it boy of YouTube. You've definitely seen him. It looks like the last video ever uploaded on the Fred channel is to these kids doing an interview, Where Do Babies Come From? with 3.1 million views eight years ago. Hi, I'm Jessica. Okay, and you may be thinking to yourself, Sam, that's not Fred. What are you showing me? Why am I watching kids interview people about where babies come from? And the reason being is because Fred actually sold his channel to a group of kids who I guess have, they pooled their allowance so they were able to buy this channel. I guess he was doing a fire sale for cheap. So the last true video from Fred to ever come out is called Fred Quest 2 Ultimate Imitation nine years ago. So this is the last time we saw Fred. Hey! Hey guys, it's Lucas and it's time for a November Fred quest. Okay, so you may have heard the high pitch, hey, it's Fred, that was like his tagline. So that was the last time we've ever seen Fred until he became Lucas, which is his real name. And now he actually runs a channel called Lucas in which he does a lot of like reactions and honestly similar videos to kind of what I do. All right, so another blast from the past, we have Jenna Marbles who has nearly 20 million subscribers. She was a very popular like vloggy-ish YouTuber. She would just sit in front of the camera and do a lot of interesting things. I'm sure she's doing something now. It looks like she has some sort of blog, some website. So I'm sure people go to that. Uh, but she hasn't uploaded in about three years. And the final video that Jenna Marbles uploaded is making a dog birthday cake. 16 minute long, three years ago. Let's check it out. So she's really big into adopting dogs. The comment said she has five adopted dogs and that is now her husband. And I believe the reason she stopped posting is because she got canceled and she just didn't want to be in the internet limelight anymore, which is honestly completely fair. It's something that I think a lot of YouTubers experience. I'm sure that'll be a recurring theme in this video. See you guys next week. That's it. Goodbye. She said, see you guys next week. That's it. Goodbye. And guess what? We never saw her again. So rest in peace to Jenna Marble's YouTube channel. Not to her. She's still very much alive. Now, this is the most recent addition to this list because we just found this out as of recording like a week ago. But Jadeon is no longer uploading on his main channel. If you don't know who he is, he is, as he notes, a retired menace. So he was very popular in the prank space and he deleted all of his videos. And so the actual final video on his channel is him explaining why he deleted all of his videos. And this was uploaded a week ago, 1.4 million views. And this is the last time you'll see him on his main channel. So he's just reading a lot of Bible verses. So, I mean, I'm a Christian myself. So I, you know, support Jadeon with whatever path he wants to go down. I think that's great if he's deciding to take in a certain angle with his channel. Let's see how it goes. I hope it's great. I'm sure he's made a boatload of money. So there's really no need for him to continue working. So if that's how he wants to utilize his channel, all the power to him. Now his new channel is called Gideon, like God Dion, but with an I, like Gideon. And you'll see here, a lot of the titles are Christians cannot use this argument against a Muslim, Jehovah's Witness claims only. So he's clearly still making content, but it's just around Christianity. Now we're moving on to one of YouTube's most popular creators back in 2016, 2017, and that is Ricegum. So Ricegum hasn't uploaded on his channel in seven months, but prior to that, it was three years since his last post. I know he streams now, but the reason why he stopped posting on his YouTube channel is because he was beefing with a lot of YouTubers. He was getting a lot of hate on Twitter. Some racist comments towards him, this and that. And he ended up just kind of stopped posting. He took a break from the internet. And so here we have his most recent video, baby girl. So I guess he's a father now, which is crazy seven months ago. So let's check this out. Oh yeah. So I guess he's literally a father. 35 weeks pregnant, our world crashed down on us when we told our baby no longer had a heartbeat. Every genetic test, blood test came back perfect. And the reason for this uh, tragedy will be unknown. Ellery had to be induced for labor for four. Oh my God, that's terrible. So the baby died. So it was like a miscarriage of some sort, or it was um, one of those situations where the fetus is no longer breathing. Wow, that's terrible. Wow. I thought this was going to be some sort of celebratory video, baby girl. And it looked like she was like deep into the pregnancy. That's really sad. I did not expect to see that from Rice Gum. Wow. So I guess he came back to his channel to post like a vulnerable moment. Wow. Very sad. So, I mean, that's what Rice Gum's up to. I, I doubt he'll ever post on this channel again. That seems like a really sad sort of thing that happened to him. So I'm sorry, man. All right. So this is one of the most popular channels to ever exist on YouTube. It's called Niga Higa by Ryan Higa. He is the creator of this channel. 
channel. He made it with some friends back in the day. They made like How to Be Ninja and all those different skits. They were back like popular when Smosh was around. And the reason why Ryan Higa stopped posting content on this channel was because he wanted to get into more mature content, stream a little bit, and he was just kind of getting tired of all the skits. He felt like he outgrew his channel. And the last video they ever did, I think it was during COVID. It says new COVID-19 study confirms beating up Asians does not prevent the coronavirus with 7 million views. So I think this is the most popular final video from a YouTuber. I love how I get this COVID-19, get the latest information, like I could learn more from this as if I'm like seriously inquiring about it. I bet you this video right now will have like a COVID tag at the bottom just because I said the word COVID. Now we have a channel called Technoblade. I'm sure everybody has heard of this channel as well. This is one of the most popular Minecraft YouTubers and he unfortunately passed away about over a year ago now and he ended it with a video called So Long Nerds, which was his final video. Obviously beloved, this video has 102 million views. So let's take a look. So it's his dad and that's his dog. And then at the end of the video, Techno's mom writes a very nice epilogue that just basically highlights how much he appreciated everything that YouTube and his audience have given to him and that you now he was obviously a very strong uh, son for them that had battled stage four cancer. Um, incredibly sad. So everybody, of course, misses Technoblade. All right, so now we have a channel called Leafy is Here that was permanently banned in 2020. I mean, this was a very controversial YouTuber for quite some time. And then they decided to pull the plug on him in 2020. He ended up coming back in 2022 with a podcast called the Leafy Cast. And then that was also pulled. So now Leafy is Here just has this archive channel that I don't know if he posted or if it's somebody else. Um, but basically we have access to his videos and it looks like the last video on the Leafy is Here channel is called the worst video on this entire website, watching will cause death. So let's check it out. Voice winner for overall social presence goes to Buzzfeed. Wow. Much. Grateful. Very. Thanks. Wow, BuzzFeed, that was an awesome little award speech you gave right there. That was awesome, funny, quirky, and unique. All right, so he's, I mean, clearly based on his commentary, you could see why he's controversial. And I mean, he to be fair, that was one of the cringiest videos I've ever watched, that BuzzFeed video. But yeah, Leafy is banned, and he had some beef with Pokemon and stuff. He's just a beefer. He's gone, he's off the platform, um, and this is his last final video ever. So goodbye to Leafy. All right, so next up, we have a channel that was very popular in 2020, and that is Corpse, or Corpse Husband is the... YouTube channel. Uh, Corpse has the very deep voice. I'm sure everybody has heard it before. And the last video that Corpse ever posted on this channel was two years ago, Choking My Friends. And it looks like Corpse, Saikuno, Valkyrie, Pokimane, just a bunch of Twitch streamers playing a game. Looks like Friday the 13th. Yeah. And so that was literally it. So that's that's Corpse, and Corpse is now seems to be gone. I don't think Corpse posts content anymore. But I did a quick Google search, and it looks like that Corpse is posting uh, on his music channel, and he actually had a post one month ago called Disdain. And I guess it's like emo, punk, rock type music. All right, so another very popular YouTuber that passed away, I believe in 2018 now, is Etika. So Etika was a gaming commentary channel. I actually was very familiar with Etika because I was pretty ingrained in the Super Smash Bros scene, and he was a very big personality there at the time. So I was very saddened when he passed away. So I'm not gonna show his last video because his last video was him basically talking about how it's going to be his last video, frankly, without getting too much into it. But I will be quickly playing, I guess, a little bit to see of some of his funniest moments. A study from the Indiana University found that brought on by exercise are a real phenomenon. That's not true. That's not true. I wish that was true, because then maybe I'd exercise more. So next up, we have David Dobrik, a channel with also around 20 million subscribers. I'm sure everybody's aware of who he is. Massive creator, used to do a lot of vlogs. He hasn't uploaded on YouTube in nearly two years because he's exclusively on Snapchat now. So he has a very big Snapchat following. He does his vlog type material, but now just on Snapchat. But anyways, the last video that David Dobrik ever posted was Hot Tub with International Model, and it looks to be Corinna Kopf in the thumbnail with him pogging. So let's check it out. I feel like the content's no longer longer like relatable. He's on like private jets and he's in his massive house in LA. And I'm pretty sure they're in Italy now. Is that what they said? Oh, Vegas, Vegas. All right, so he's gifting somebody a Tesla, which is like a classic David Dobrik thing. So I guess he went out with a bang. It looks like nobody really notices that this is his last video. Like there's zero comments that talk about it. He has his Instagram page and then he has his podcast and he has his perfume, which I actually have. Nope, never mind. I threw that out. Next up, we have Filthy Frank, who has nearly 8 million subscribers, and he stopped posting videos because he was getting seizures from all the stress that was coming with the expectations of being a YouTuber. And his final video is Francis of the Filth, out now. I've actually never watched his content before, but I've heard of him. Sell out way or anything. 
you know? All right, so this is just like a skit that he put up. I don't even know what's exactly. happening here. Okay, and this is available on Amazon and iTunes. So I guess his final video was promoting a wider project. And I don't know exactly what he's up now. Maybe somebody can provide an update on that. Let's check it out. All right, so Filthy Frank is actually a guy named Joji from Japan. And he is actually a musical artist. And he has a lot of songs. He does still post. So I think he's just now taking his musical journey a lot more seriously than his Filthy Frank content way. Which, you know, I think that's a common theme. A lot of YouTubers graduate into music or something more mainstream, even some of the most popular ones. So I don't think this is much of a surprise, but it's good to see he's doing well. Seems to be enjoying it. All right. So next up, there's a channel called Boyfriend v Girlfriend, which I can't find on YouTube. So I guess they took it down. But the two people involved were Jesse and Jen. And the channel ended because they broke up. And so you can't run a channel with somebody who's your ex-girlfriend or ex-boyfriend. But they do have individual channels that they actually still actively post on. So you'll see Jesse did a Spider-Man in real life prank a month ago. They got a million views. So he's still, you know, pretty popping on YouTube, I'd say. And then if we look at Jen, she posted two weeks ago and looks like she's doing a lot of travel content and they still seem to be making some stuff together. Like they might be back. Maybe they're dating. Maybe they're going to activate the channel again at some point, but it looks like they're back at it. I think they might actually be dating again. So that could be an interesting angle, but there you have it. So Lily Singh is next up with around 15 million subscribers. Now she stopped posting for a long time, but it seems as if she's come back a little bit. Now she sprinkles in a post here or there. It looks like six months ago, she gave her most recent video, which was a life update called It's Been a While. And she was actually the host of a late night show for a while. And I think it was relatively unsuccessful. And she's dipping her hands a little bit back into the YouTube pot, I think, to try and get a little bit of relevancy back. But that's the case with Lily Singh. So let's see the most recent update and let's see if she'll ever come back. What up, everyone? It's your girl, Lily. Oh, it's been a hot minute. I'm actually done up because I'm doing- That's such like a 2018 YouTuber intro. I mean, I don't know. I think the intro to this video was similar, but you get the point. Like this is definitely like she didn't learn the new meta, which in a way I kind of appreciate. I like that she's kind of sticking to her guns. All right, so now we have Liza Koshy, who was David Dobrik's ex-girlfriend and she was a YouTuber in her own right. And she has a YouTube original show two years ago called Liza On Demand. She was actually gone for two years. And then all of a sudden she recreated I Love Lucy, this one scene where there's like a conveyor belt. And this now remains to be the final video on her channel. And there's not a lot of indication that she's going to be coming back, but she had a very similar career path to Lily Singh. And it looks like, you know, maybe she's also sprinkling in one or two videos now that her Liza on demand YouTube original series seems to be gone. All right. So she green screened herself. I feel like the bottom of the screen's getting cut off. All right, and she posted this on Halloween, so I guess she dressed up as Lucy for Halloween and she decided to just redo it. So that's what she's up to. It looks like she's also have done some interviews recently. So five months ago, she did an interview. So she's still very much public facing, but that is the final YouTube video from Liza Koshy. Next, we have EDP445. And if you don't know who he is, he was a, uh, I guess, just like a commentator type channel. And he was caught basically doing some uh, like acts. He was caught texting an underage girl and went to her house with a cupcake. It's an infamous video. You may have seen it. And so he's been banned off of YouTube. But the last video with EDP was actually a collab, I guess, between EDP and Jadeon because Jadeon caught him doing a very similar thing. And the video, I don't think was ever released officially, but there is some clips out there. And so what we were watching is EDP being caught at a dialysis center. Look at those mommy And numbers. there he is in the flesh. So he's on the way to get some dialysis. But I just want to let you know Get the f out of here, bro. you know. All right, and this looks to be after he shuts the door, the final appearance of EDP on camera. Nobody knows what he's up to, starting now. So there's EDP's final video on YouTube because YouTube now heavily censors EDP content. I'm sure this video will even be age restricted like my last video because of it. All right, so next up we have the Dolan twins and they announced their departure from YouTube in 2021 because YouTube was affecting their mental health and they had a lot of other projects coming up. But I will say that ironically, the timing of this video has given us a new Dolan twins video called Nothing Left to Give, a short film. So I think that's something they were working on. But before that was Twin Swap on Omega. 2.1 million views, and this was about two and a half, three years ago. So let's look at this. Okay, they're just doing like a twin prank. That was their final video. But I am curious what this most recent one is. Curious if they act in their own film. Okay, but they were the writers and directors of it. And I'm assuming they produced this as well. No, they didn't. They All right, so they. I think they're just filmmakers now, the Dolan twins. All right, Tyler Oakley announced about two years ago that he's leaving, as you'll see right here on his channel. See you later. And then he came back a year ago and he said, what happened to me? No, I'm not dead. And then he actually came back four months ago and he just made an actual video called Aging on the Internet, which 
she talks about his journey on the internet. So Tyler Oakley was a mega channel, did a lot of similar things to a lot of the other YouTubers in 2017, 18. Then he left and now he's back for, I guess, like sprinkled videos here and there. So let's look at his last video and I don't know, maybe he comes back. I don't think he officially labeled this as a goodbye. It was more like I'm taking a long break. What is my vibe right now? <laughs> What's your take? I'll wait. Every YouTuber from like 2018 that comes back still retains the same level of like intro and like enthusiasm that like every YouTuber in 2018 had. Nowadays, people start videos in such different ways, but it seems like old dogs don't learn new tricks. I have four new playlists that I have been working on. So there's dance, which is dance. All right, so he's focusing on music. I don't know why. I'd love to learn the psychology behind why YouTubers, after they're done YouTubing and making creative videos, decide to go into music. Every single YouTuber does it. Like it is inevitable that at some point you're going to be making a music video. I'll probably end up making a music video at some point and it's probably gonna be my most viewed video because every YouTuber, even like PewDiePie, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, KSI, their most popular content is their music video. So maybe there's something to it. Like music is just like the replayability about it or something, but everybody goes into music. Why is that? Including Tyler Oakley. So that's what he's up to now. All right, so now we have Erica Costell who was a Jake Paul feature in the Team 10 house. I think she might might have been the girlfriend of Jake Paul at some point. But now, I mean, I don't even know why we're looking at her. She hasn't uploaded in about two years. I think now she has a clothing line, but the last video she ever posted was reunited with my little sister with 100K views. We are both wearing a Kyrie Sports. If you don't know, it is my clothing. Okay, so a Kyrie Sports, that is her clothing line and she runs that. And I guess she doesn't market on her social media, which is, I guess she's trying to just do this separately. But that's the video. It's just a vlog that she does with her sister. We are not going to watch this whole thing. Looks like they're just in the injections office getting some work done throughout the video and that's it. So she's no longer a creator, I suppose. And now she's just a businesswoman. All right, so now we have a pair of TikTokers who also seem to be massive on YouTube at the time, but it is the Lopez brothers, which is Tony and Andreas Lopez. They have like 50 million followers combined on TikTok. It looks like they just did like classic TikTok type content on YouTube back in 2020. And they were getting like massive views on their videos, but then they got under fire because I think it was Tony Lopez was underage girls, you know, like classic YouTuber things. And so they stopped posting three years ago. So this is their final video. The one on the left is Tony and it's funny TikTok challenge. Try not to laugh. Uh, all right, look. Oof. Oof. <laughs> this used to be such good content, like the try not to laugh, water in your mouth, but then everybody did it and it just kind of died out. All right, let's see if anybody has commented on this recently. The goats of child, well, get the van boys and load up those Wow, y'all remember when he grew minors? He likes kids. Okay, they are not very friendly to the Lopez brothers. I guess rightfully so, right? All right, so next up is a channel called FPS Russia, and they have 6.9, nice, million subscribers. The last video was uploaded seven years ago called the X-15 and XM-42 Personal Flamethrowers. Hello, my friends, it's FPS Russia again. This is the most Russian dude I've ever seen in my life. What? Okay, so I'm learning that this guy came out of prison, bullied people in COD Modern Warfare 2, and then he faked his whole career as a Russian. So now we have Machinima, which I'm sure you've remembered. They used to make like a ton of different like cartoons, animations, stuff around gaming. They turned into an MCN, which is a multi-channel network in which they own a lot of YouTube channels. And they take a percentage of your ad rev and they copyright strike a lot of different channels if you're using their content. So for instance, they would be striking me for looking at their page right now. Like this is a case in point of what they do. Obviously this wasn't a very lucrative position for them to take. And so they purged all their videos. So there's actually nothing remaining on the their channel other than this one animated shorts playlist. So let's check it out. Yeah, so I guess this is just some of their Minecraft animations that they would just make. This was nine years ago before Minecraft was even big. So next up is Cameron Dallas, a channel with 5 million subscribers that was pretty big like five-ish years ago. And they ended up no longer posting YouTube videos. You guessed it, because now they want to pursue music and they have a Spotify link. And I think Cameron Dallas is still making music, but he hasn't uploaded a YouTube video in quite some time. In fact, he's purged his channel of all YouTube videos other than what his current music videos are on the channel. So the last video though technically posted was Cameron Dallas True. And yeah, people are saying, I'm so shocked. I had no idea you made music. All right, so good for him. I hope he has a great musical journey. Just another YouTuber that's now dabbling in music. So now it's a channel called Bosnian Bill and he's basically like a lock expert. So he calls it the lock lab. So different ways to overcome security devices with a focus on particular locks. Bosnian Bill ended up taking a hiatus that turned into, looks like a quit two years ago because now he's focused on his family and he's taking time to relax with them. So his final video was budget training locks. Let's check this out. Let's see what his final words on camera ever were. It does save you money, but there are trade-offs. 
trade-offs was the final word this man has ever uttered. And it makes sense because when you want to sacrifice for your family, there has to be some trade-offs and there has to be some sacrifices. So it seems the trade-off had to have been the YouTube channel that he made so he could spend more time with his family. So now we have a channel called Asena O'Neill. I don't believe this is her original channel. However, although maybe it is, maybe she took down a lot of her videos, but I could have sworn this person had way more subscribers. Uh, Asena O'Neill quit social media because she said it was basically toxic and she was exposing a lot of the sponsorship practices and what YouTubers do behind the scenes. But nonetheless, her final video is just her explaining this in which she says, why I'm really quitting social media. So let's see. This is my last ever post on YouTube. Yeah, well, you weren't lying, so I'll give you that. I haven't told you why I'm really quitting. Okay, so now let's, let's, let's listen. I know a lot of other social media personalities and just how fake it all is. You know what? I will say that she's kind of spitting when she's saying that a lot of creators are fake because there's certainly a lot of people in this industry that are just like, they're weird. They're like lizard people. You would think that a lot of YouTubers are like, fun, normal people on camera, but it's like weird how it's like the same when they're on and off camera, like their personalities develop into like this fake personality and they just like put out content in a really eerie way. It's like they just become like YouTubers, you know? Like I'm a person who makes YouTube videos and yes, I guess I am a YouTuber, but I'm not like a, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Sambucha back with another video. Like there's some people who take that energy and then they use that in their everyday life and it can get like a bit jarring. All right, so grade A under A stopped posting videos and 2018, came back, and then he stopped posting again. So he made a lot of these videos that are just like animation based, and you'll see. So Why Jesus Hates Christmas was his last video. This was about a year and a half ago, and now he seems to be completely gone. Let's check it out. Everyone loves Christmas, mate. It's Sin true. Do you know who would hate Christmas if he was still around? Jesus. Me! Oh, that for me, is it? No. It's for my nan. What? You know, he's bringing up good points. Jesus would not be happy if he saw the state of Christmas nowadays. Christmas is no longer about Jesus's birthday. It's more so about the secularism around Christmas and how we celebrate it as just a holiday to spend time with family. Which though I would argue is a celebration of Jesus because we're celebrating the religious undertones that come with Christmas like family. So there you go, Jesus, your defense attorney. All right, so now we have Jeepers Media and it, Jesus, eight years ago is Jeepers Media's final video. So 400,000 subscribers, which at the time, if we do YouTube inflation. This guy had like 4 million subscribers and basically he wanted to continue his work as an artist. So he no longer posted onto YouTube, but he, you know, whatever. He does live streams once in a while. People do seem to miss his toy reviews. So let's take a look. This is Mike Mozart of the Toy Channel. Oh, what? I miss him already. Just such good energy. You could tell this guy is just like a jolly dad. Loves what he does. What a great guy. What do the comments say about him? Checked on him after six years. He's still around. Okay, so it looks like he still posts on other platforms like Instagram, but we're not looking at that because we are only looking at their last YouTube video. And so that is it. All right, so there's a channel called Waste Time Chasing Cars that 11 years ago uploaded their last video. They have 337,000 subscribers. It looks like what happened is that there was comedy sketches uploaded to this channel until the fall of 2012. And that is when they ended up stopping. Uh, and there was an entry to a music video competition for this song in my mind. And this was submitted and then we never heard from Mac again. So let's see his final video. This is a pretty good music video for 2011. Uh, this guy's gotta come back. It's crazy he's like 40 now, this guy. What do the comments say? This guy would have well over a million subs. Absolutely, this guy would be absolutely crushing it. Kind of sad that he no longer is uh, posted on here. So now we have the Genoskians and the guy's name is Jai. He described it as a natural end to the channel because none of them wanted to be pranksters for their whole lives. And so, you know, basically they felt it was just time for them to hang up the cleats. And so the final video was two years ago and it's, I built a water park in my house and they're Australian. And they had 2.37 million subscribers. So they were definitely, they were definitely up there. 4 a.m. so I had to kick all their friends out to try and build it. Yeah. Off. Such an Australian. Yeah, it's kind of sad like when you feel like you've outgrown the channel, but that's why it's important for me. Like whatever video you see me putting out, namely the long form videos, it's generally something I want to do. So if I ever take a random turn, don't question it. It's just me wanting to do something. So if I make a video and it's like drinking water for 20 hours straight, that's just because that's what I want to do. And you know, hopefully you guys watch, but if you don't watch, at least I'm doing something I want to do. Okay, so there's a channel called Talking Kitty Cat that has 2.85 million subscribers. Their last video is about a year ago. This one kind of tragic because the cat that was in question, there's actually a couple cats, they all passed away. So the cats are no longer alive. And so of course you can continue with an animal channel uh, if the main animal died. And so that's obviously very sad, but the owner of the cats ended up making a video titled my first video released to public about a year and a half ago. And it uh, essentially chronicles the journey on this channel and talks about how the cat died. So Sylvester and uh, I don't know, I hate loss, loss sucks. 
It does Rip to Sylvester and what's the other one's name? Shelby, Steve, and Gibbyson. So all the cats that appeared in these videos are no longer alive, which is extremely sad. Here's just an example of one of the videos. I did some research and apparently time travel is only possible using a wormhole. So I found a worm and a hole and I put the worm in the hole. It was kind of messed up. I just clicked on a random clip and it's a worm going down the drain. All right, so now we have Gabby Hanna, i.e. The Gabby Show. And she was a creator that used to post a lot of different videos, very similar to, I guess, like Jenna Marbles, vloggy commentary, front of the camera, lifestyle stuff. And guess what? She is now focusing one, two, three, on her music, just like every single other YouTuber that decided to quit to pursue music. And her most recent upload was, of course, a song called Warning Shots. I, of course, don't want to get claimed by this. I can't watch this, but you get the idea. This is Gabby Hanna's most recent and possibly last video that she'll ever put out. Okay, Charlie McDonnell is a YouTuber that became transgender and looked like uh, they purged all of the videos on the channel. And the reason why there's no longer any uploads on here is because Charlie noted that this was a persona that was crafted when Charlie was 16 years old. And now that Charlie, I guess, is 32 years old, they felt as if this is no longer a channel that fits kind of the vibe of what they wanted it to ultimately be. And there seems to have been some developments in Charlie's personal life, clearly. So the last video of all time on this channel was three months ago, actually. So pretty recently, the clues that I was transgender. I feel like the stories I'm going to tell today are like the sorts of things I'm supposed to hold back. All right. So it's just a memoir for 12 and a half minutes just going through the journey. Okay, so now we have Bart Baker and Bart Baker has 10 million subscribers. And this one is very interesting because apparently Vice News reported that the demonetization really annoyed Bart and he didn't want to deal with it. So he shifted his career to the Chinese market. So now you could find him appealing to the Chinese market on other websites. But Bart Baker, his last video on YouTube was a music video, just like everybody else. But I think it is a parody video. I think he makes a lot of parody stuff. So let's look at it. Okay, so clearly he's just like making fun fun of like rich musicians that do these types of oh this is i see so this is like a six nine one all right so i mean that's what he does now and it says you either live to make parodies or become the parody yourself bart big oof oh so this isn't a parody this is an actual music video so bart baker and i guess you could tell by the music channel here he is officially a musician all right so now there was a channel called seven super girls and youtube had to shut it down because the channel's creator pleaded guilty to child abuse and Florida court. Um, and yeah, so basically YouTube took that seriously and they removed the channel. But basically a lot of tweens watch this channel. I've never heard of it before. I'm not really their target demo. But the last video ever posted on here was actually three months ago. Now this may be like a re-upload channel, so I could be wrong. I don't know the full lore. I cannot watch any more of that scary film. Okay, this is definitely a re-upload channel because the quality is very low. Oh, uh, there's the monster. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so this was in 2014. So it's safe to say that it's been about 10 years since this channel was active. That's actually kind of eerie, the fact that there's like a child abuse case going on in the background. I wonder if it's the person under this mask even. All right, so now it's a channel called Kingsley who self-describes himself as I like adding humor to the stuff everyone is freaking out about. And Kingsley uh, doesn't post any longer because one, Kingsley's focused on music, right? Of course. And also Kingsley is focused on his mental health. And so he decided to take a step away and to live a life that's not online, which for a lot of people is the right move. But the last video by Kingsley was about a year ago and it's a bird blank on my head. So one of the videos that I unlocked today is my birds video. I always gotta see the final words here. In my head where I immediately thought of the internet. Okay, internet was the final word. I mean, I think that's very fitting. So Kingsley, I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're taking care of yourself. Okay, so now we have Red Kimon, who is a very interesting case study because Red Kimon was a massive channel. I mean, one of this compilation videos has 107 million views. This channel just disappeared off the face of the earth about eight years ago. Some people said they just wanted to take a break. Other people said that they died. We don't know exactly what happened, but the last video was impossible GTA five stunts and fails. So let's see. We love you, Red Kimon. Hope you're still living your best life. Damn six years. If you're out there, I hope you're doing well. So nobody really knows. And he would just post these types of videos. Another channel that garnered a lot of speculation was Rinri Game Game, which 
glitched. Apparently stopped posting nine years ago. The last video was video game Christmas specials. Favorite TV show where everyone is celebrating. A For those wondering what happened to Rinri, you can find out why she hasn't uploaded on her Facebook. Okay. Oh, so Rinri has two kids and works full time. So that's why. So, all right, Rinri. Well, I hope you're enjoying your life with your kids. This is an interesting concept though. I feel like this is a short I'd make. All right, this is a channel called Brit Space. And the reason why this channel no longer posts is because Brit was married to somebody named Austin and Austin apparently cheated not once, but twice. And it wasn't like they were boyfriend, girlfriend, they were married, they had a kid. And so that marriage dissolved. And with the dissolving of the marriage also came the dissolving of the channel. Although it looks like Meet My New Trainer, it looks like this Brit is still uploading infrequently, I'd say. Four months, seven months, nine months. It's not the worst cadence I've seen, but let's check it out. I'm here. All right, so there's Brit. And it looks like she has a partnership with Planet Fitness. So congrats to her. You know what? I'll say I'm a pretty big fan of Planet Fitness. It's not the worst gym in the world. People like to talk bad about it, but I think Planet Fitness is everything you need to sustain like a physique. Like really, what more do you want? Yeah, if you want to be like a power lifter or like a bodybuilder, it's going to be tough to do it there. But if you're just trying to be like relatively in shape, just pay $15 a month and go to Planet Fitness. All right, so now we have Lindsay Ellis who made a Patreon blog back in 2021 called Walking Away from Omelas, which is like an allusion to some short story. And she announced her official retirement from YouTube because of one, cancel culture and two, online harassment. And the last video ever posted was Love Never Dies, a magnificent musical trash fire sequel to Phantom of the Opera. When Men in Black became a surprise and she would do a lot of video essays like this. Men in Black 1 was an origin. She has such a good video essay voice. Like if I were to craft like the perfect YouTuber to give a video essay, it would be like a blend between her and then what's the guy's name? Kurzy Stotts, the guy who does like those informational videos. But yeah, I I, don't, I wish she still made videos because this seems to be a video that I would probably watch like while I'm cooking or something, just put it on my phone. All right, and finally we have Total Biscuit, a channel uh, of which the guy Bane unfortunately suffered from terminal liver cancer. And so he left the channel to do, I believe, chemotherapy a few weeks before he actually ended up dying. So rest in peace to Total Biscuit. But he was a PC gaming review channel that also did a bunch of other things like podcasting and such. And yeah, the final video seems to have been a remembering Total Biscuit at CoxCon 2018 trailer. If I could describe uh, Total Biscuit simply, it would be as a very honest and very sincere person. Everyone's saying they wish they would have saw his opinion on certain games like Cyberpunk and so on and so forth. So rest in peace to Total Biscuit and any YouTuber that of course passed away or is dealing with mental health and they decide to take a step away. I mean, I hope that you guys find peace and that you guys are are living good lives now. All right, guys, that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. If you wanna see more content, make sure to click here, click here. Otherwise, subscribe on your way out and I will see you next time. Peace.